Hello there and welcome back to Siberia. Today we're gonna go out on the town and paint it red. Red with the tape of bureaucracy. Or whatever the color of lawyerism, I guess, is. Anyways, last time we arrived in Valadi Len and we had a look around this hotel. So actually, now that I look at it, has seen better days, hasn't it? Looks like someone just shat on the wall. <clears throat> we talked to whatever his name is, and we talked a little bit to Momo before he decided to storm out all, all angry and bitterly. And we s actually nicked some of his shit. We have some cockwheels here that we uh, will probably parcel with later. And we had a bit of a read on the town. You, you know what? It's an episode ago. Probably, probably know that. Moving on. So, today we'll just go right on ahead out and uh, see what Valadilen has to offer. Banging music. That's the first thing it has to offer. I love the soundtrack. Absolutely adore it. If you can get your hands on the GOG version, which I do believe has the soundtrack, I highly suggest it just for that. It is really good. Not something I would listen to in my car or something, but if you know, if you like chill with music, it's it's good. Let's actually go back one screen here. I forgot it does that! Oh that's so fucking cool. That's so fancy. Look at him, look at how dapper he is. All right, so I don't think there was anything more on this screen here. Okay. Valadilen is a town I would really love to to live in. It's like nice and cozy and slightly thoggy. Uh, that may, that gives like this like cozy feel. Very few inhabitants, it's very nice and quiet here. Good morning. Good morning? What a pleasure to meet such a lovely young lady honoring our aging streets. Please, uh, please sit yourself down next to me so we can enjoy the air together. It would be a pleasure, but I'm afraid I don't have the time. Some other time, maybe. I hope so, miss. I remember when these streets were full of vibrant life. In those days, there was a charming encounter to be had round every corner. Ah, our good little town of Valadilen is not what it used to be. <clears throat> it looks like things have changed a bit around here. Our children have all left Wait. the valley. They need to earn a living, don't they? Can't really blame them. You have to move with <laughs> the times, don't you? And it's not at the Vorlberg factory that they'll find jobs. <laughs> Being excluded from the world is not an easy burden to bear, believe you me, miss. But it's such a pretty little village. Uh, I can tell you're not from these parts. I hope you enjoy the pleasures that we still have to offer. Good day to you. I, I'm very sorry, did I ask for your entire, like, encyclopedic knowledge on the village? No, I said, good morning. Alright, so I think the recording picked that up. I can't see that uh, on OBS on the other screen here because Audacity is in the way. But I think I just turned the volume up and down with the scroll uh, on my headset. I wanted to just turn it down for myself in the headset. So that's out the window. I don't. I don't get to do that. I'll, I'll have to uh, audio balance before I start recording later on. Right. I think. Uh, yeah. We don't. We don't go here yet. We will later. I know where to go, but I just wanted to talk to this person. I, I knew he was there. So we'll go down here instead. And as I was saying, very, very nice, cozy little village. I would love to live in a place like like this. If, if it was within driving distance of civilization. I would want to be able to go to a game store or something like that. That's going to work. It looks like something's missing. 
Yeah, that's just straight up a puzzle for later. Don't have to give it that yet. Might literally be a gear in, in this in this place. I think I'll walk up here first, because that's that building right there was uh, where we were supposed to go. No need to go down there. I think there's some, some slip ups in the translations, like go down there, it's like don't need to bother him would be more appropriate, or bother them or something. It is French, so there might be some, some stuff there. Good morning. Are you open? Can I buy something from your bakery? No, afraid not. Not possible. We're closed. I can wait a while. You can wait, but we're closed all day. Day of mourning. I'm sorry. Please accept my condolences. Don't worry about it. Because of Madame Vorobolg's death, all the shops are closed. Mayor's decision. Try tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I won't be here. That's a pity. No need to go down there. There it is again. Go down there. Oh, was this the place we had to go? No need to go down there. Hmm. Actually, oh yeah, this this is the place. I think over here for the eagle-eyed of you. Oh, I mean. Meant to say it for the eagle eye viewer has probably noticed the newspaper. Words, they're hard. Very hard. The Valadilen Gazette, Wednesday, April 17th, 2002. Mourning the loss of the Queen of Our Hearts. Let us pay homage today to Anna Vorberg, who died peacefully yesterday at the age of 86. The great lady devoted her life to her business and our community. This formidable woman had an extraordinary energy, a force that allowed our automaton technology to develop and to make our valley continually proud. Her vitality was matched by her generosity and goodness, which has marked all of Val Valadilen's inhabitants. The mayor of our town has declared today would be a day of collective mourning in honor of Madame Warburg. Her funeral will take place this morning at 10 a.m. in the parish church, officiated by the town's own priest. Now this place is just gonna be another wound up dude. That would be, that would be an easy way to get out of services like that. It's like you wound up the priest, you put some people in the, in, in the seat, you wound up those, you just get out of there. Ecology. The protest group Mountain Peace demonstrated yesterday near the site of the new Espiat Dam. They claim the construction of the dam has damaged the Blue Warbler's natural habitat. Intervention on the part of the forest ranger was necessary to disperse the demonstrators. There's an ad down here. Stiff joints, chronic hangovers, need a spring in your step. Look no further. Dr. Zweitsch's miracle elixir, one remedy for a thousand woes. And an editorial. Anna Wahlberg's death marks the end of an era in Valadilen. Madame Warburg was an outstanding woman who presided over Warburg manufacturing for more than 50 years. Her death seems to bring further loss in its wake, surrounding the death novel of our automaton, automaton factory, the economic heart of our town. It is impossible to view her passing without concern for the future of our valley. In the last decade, computers, video games and electronic robots have become uh, predominant in our consu consumer society, rendering traditional clockwork mechanisms obsolete. The age of the wound-up toy is over. Such technology cannot compete in the modern economic climate and has fallen by the wayside. It would have been definitely consigned to oblivion if Warburg Manufacturing had not upheld its ren mm, renowned Sovon Fair. There it is again. Correct me, please, someone, uh, if, if that's completely wrong. I'm always, always out to learn some new words and stuff. 
helping Valerie Len to remain economically active. However, today the industry has lost its spiritual force and the future looks bleak. Maybe the time has come to celebrate the prospective American takeover of the factory. But... <clears throat> oh, okay, so... Uh, okay, I'm just losing it. Valerie Len guess... <laughs> no! No menu, why? God damn. That didn't that did not need to be that hard. I wish I could cut that out, but I don't think that would be possible. But what will be uh what <laughs> But what will be the cost to the soul of Valadila? I'm so sorry, that was just garbage. <laughs> Alright, so that was a bit more background on Valadila. Madame Anna Warburg seems to have been very, very important to this town. And for good reason, they really, you could imagine, and I never looked into this, but you can imagine this is just some place, well, it's in the Alps of France, so it's probably very secluded, and they only have that automaton factory, which in its heyday was like a, probably a very big tourist attraction, a, a, attraction at least a, a, according to the brochure, br brochure, br words, the paper with words on it that we found in the lobby of the hotel this was a place where a lot of people convened to to be amazed by the wound up automatons so so it probably was like a you know just a giant giant uh shock for the the village to to see like that the factory go downhill and 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 become what it is now, just a, a quaint village in, in the Alps. Alright, more robots. No surprise there. Oh, this thing's jammed. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you lost your head. You got, got your heads in the clouds. <clears throat> Get it? What do we do here? Do that. Okay, so do that. And uh, not much happens. That is because we have to go to the right menu, please. Find fax number two addressed to Matria Alfol. Here. And pick up fax number two, put it there, pull the lever again. That's actually kind of cool. That's that's actually really cool. Would you believe that actually stumped me for the longest goddamn time? Oh, I should talk to the notary first. Ah, come on, just nick it. It stumped me for so long. I think I had to use a walkthrough. That's oh, so embarrassing. That puzzle just stumped me. I didn't. I didn't get put the facts in its hand. It was. It's clearly looking at something, and I, I just didn't get that. So dumb. Hello, sir. Miss Walker, I presume. Have you had a good journey? Everything went very smoothly. Thank you. Do take a seat, Miss Walker, please. Sorry about that. Was mm, drinking a bit of my tea. I imagine you are aware of the business that brings me here. Of course. I was waiting for you. Oh boy, I hope you um, you saw the dialogue tree and was like, I hope, I hope that's present every single time, because you're, mm, you're, you're lucky day. Right, let's just take it from the top. I am the legal representative for the Universal Toy Company. I'm responsible for... So I understood, Miss Walker. Uh, Miss Walker, I am afraid that the sale of the Vorlberg factory is not as straightforward as it first seemed. Whoa there. Everything was agreed. 
We'd obtained Anna Vorlberg's consent, and her death does absolutely nothing to invalidate that. Now, I have to be back in New York the day after tomorrow, Metro Alphotair. My client and I are impatient to seal this deal. I understand only too well, Miss Walker. <clears throat> there is a... an heir, Miss Walker. Excuse me? An heir? But Madame Varlberg never married, as far as I know. And in my last conversation with her, she absolutely never mentioned this detail. Miss Walker, believe me, I was more surprised than you are. Anna Vorlberg sent me a letter two days before she died. Understand, Miss Walker, that had I known about this earlier, I would have informed you. I shall read you the document in my possession. <clears throat> I am so very old. It seems that today life is slipping away from me more quickly than I imagined, and I fear that I will not be of this world to sign the takeover contract for my dear factory. So, I must make this confession to you now. My brother, Hans, is still alive. It would not surprise me if you find this difficult to believe, but it is indeed the truth. You must remember his death, his funeral, too, even though you were very young at the time, it was but a sordid charade dreamt of by our father. To him, the very idea that his only son should wish to leave Baladilen and abandon the family business was unbearable. When Hans left, he preferred to think him dead and make everybody else believe this too. He obliged me to bear this terrible secret as well. I repeat that Hans is still alive, so when I die, it is he who becomes the sole and rightful heir of our factory. Okay, I see. If Hans Varlberg is not dead after all, then I just have to sign the contracts with him. I suppose you've already contacted him? Where can I reach him? The second half of the letter informs us that Hans Varlberg is somewhere in Siberia. I will leave the document in your hands to read at your leisure. Say what? Well, it seems that Anna's brother is still alive. Shuck. Anna Varlberg had no further information to add? Unfortunately not, Miss Walker. I have told you as much as I know. The situation, in legal terms, is now clear. If you want to conclude this sale, you have to find Hans Vorlberg. Apparently, there is a body lying in the town cemetery. There also seems to be some ghost wandering around Siberia. It seems you have your work cut out for you. Believe me, Miss Walker, when I say that I am most sorry for this regrettable setback, most sorry. Great. What now, then? Perhaps you will find out more in the Varlberg factory archives. You will find the key in the waiting room. My role in this affair finishes here with the reading of this letter. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must rest. You see, my health is not excellent at the moment, and my doctor forbids me from working for too long. I will not detain you for any longer, Miss Walker. Do not forget to close the door as you go out. Goodbye, sir. And don't let it hit your ass. Just get out of my office. Well then, shenanigans, tomfoolery, and also a cliffhanger. We now know that Hans is apparently still alive, and we are going to have to go and find him and apparently also go ghostbusting. So apparently the third Ghostbusters was made and it starred only one woman, a lawyer from New York. Cause that makes sense, right? You know, it's the lawyer's job to run around finding an heir. Well, it wouldn't be an adventure game if, if, uh, we, if we didn't run around doing stupid shit. Okay, sorry, I'm trailing off now because, yeah. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed. 
our excursion into the city of Valadilen, short as it was, but hopefully sweet. I can see here that we didn't get much done in 22-3 minutes, so I'll try and hurry it along just a little bit more for the coming episodes. And hopefully you'll join me then for our adventure to begin here in Valadilen. We're gonna run out and see if we can't find Hans and go grey robbing, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I'll see you then. Oh, the intro is shade. Outro. The outro is shade. What's that? Boo? Boo, you say? We didn't get to go through all the dialogue options? Well, we can have that now. So let's take him from the top, shall we? Well, third run from the top. We know what the other two does. Seeing how as Madame Varlberg is no longer with us, I trust that I can rely on you to conclude the sale? Please do not set your hopes too high, Miss Walker. I fear that I cannot be of much help to you. Have you ever met Hans Varlberg, Anna's brother? I have a few vague memories of him, that is all. I was very young at the time. <laughs> very young. If you don't mind, can we come back to that later? At the tavern, I met a young boy by the name of Momo. I was informed that he is mentally disabled. Whatever his condition, he told me about a man called Hans. He's apparently Madame Varlberg's brother. Moreover, it appears that Hans is not actually dead. What do you think of that? <clears throat> Let us take one thing at a time, Miss Walker. Mm -hmm. You will receive all the information you need in due course, you can be sure of that. What do you think about that? And he's like, <coughs> about that. That is a magnificent automaton you have at your entrance. I'm very proud of it. And since my health problems, it has become absolutely indispensable for me. Yes, indispensable. It was Anna Vorlberg who had the idea. She provided many houses with this kind of machinery. Yeah. Health problems. It's good. Good to help you with your health problems. Technology is good for that. You don't find it suspicious that Madame Varlberg left us so suddenly? Mm. It's not like she decided to die. Her death took us by surprise. She still seemed to have so much life left in her. I would have loved to have met her. Anna Vorlberg was not only one of my most faithful clients, she was also a very dear friend. <laughs> she makes it sound like she was at her desk one day and she was like, you know, I'll be good today, yeah? I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright, so that was the dialogues, uh, the <coughs> words that we could have with uh, Matria Alfolter if we didn't haste ourselves through the mission thing. Which is kind of a pisser that it like it just cuts us off and throws us out of his office. But there they are. Now we've seen them and uh, now the episode ends.